Have you ever spent hours getting a piece sanded and ready for finish, and then the moment you apply the stain or the finish, those dreaded sanding swirls rear their ugly head? No, God! In this video, we're gonna talk about what causes that and five ways to keep them from happening again in the future. So let's go. Sanding swirls typically happen with random orbital sanders. Now, if you're not familiar, random orbital sanders, they spin in a circle, and then also the head also oscillates back and forth to create a random scratch pattern. And while random orbital sanders are, in my opinion, one of the most versatile sanders, they're not perfect, and those little sanding swirls typically are the proof. One of the things that you can do to eliminate swirls is to go through the grits correctly. Now, the grits refer to the uh, sandpaper here, and typically, you're gonna see that you may start out, let's just say you start with an 80, and then you're gonna work your way up to a, a 220. Well, you're gonna wanna go from an 80 to a 120, maybe a 180, and then a 220. If you jump from 80 to 220, what ends up happening is it doesn't allow the grit that you're on to correctly erase and to sand out the marks that were left from the previous coarser grit sandpaper. And so if you do this correctly, you're going to stair step up to a really beautiful finish. Our second tip is to simply slow down. Now, I absolutely can't stand sanding. And I, I think that sometimes really it's just because by the time that you get to sanding, it's toward the end of the project, you're ready for it to be over with, and you kind of see the end in sight, but it's like you just can't quite get there because sanding is kind of slow. So if you have the disdain that I have for it, it's natural to want to try and speed things up. But if you move that sander too fast, I promise you, you're gonna end up with swirl marks. Been multiple times I've seen people on YouTube or on Instagram and they're sanding and they're sanding so fast that it's almost like, you know, almost like you'd use a handsaw, like that kind of speed. That actually will cause you a lot of problems. A good rule of thumb is to go about one inch per second. And I know that this is gonna seem a little slow, but I promise you that going too fast is a surefire way to get those sanding swirls. So the third tip is to not push down too hard. It typically feels like that if you push down harder, you're gonna cut through more and you're gonna sand faster, but most of the time, it kinda has a negative impact on things. Instead of putting a lot of pressure on the sander, allow the natural weight of the sander to do the work. That weight of the sander is typically enough to give you a appropriate amount of sand. And you're gonna know that you're pushing down too hard if the sander stops spinning. And if you're worried that during the process you're going to uh, maybe not get really even results, another thing that you can do is just take a pencil and just go over the piece lightly with a pencil and then as you sand, you'll see those pencil marks sand away and that will help you to know that you're sanding a lot more evenly as you work through the grids. Now most random orbital sanders come from the factory with uh, typically a bag attached to them for dust collection. And one of the things, a lot of people don't know this, but you can actually just take these off. When you take them off, the best thing to do is just throw them as far as you can because they're garbage. Wow, this is garbage. You actually like this? You need actual dust collection when it comes to a random orbital sander. Now, I'm not saying you've got to run out and buy a Festool dust extractor, but at the very least, you need to hook it up to a shop vac, make sure you've got a good filter and a bag system for it as well. You're gonna be really amazed at the difference, not only the, just the dust in the air, but also the sanding result. Since the topic of dust collection is at hand, there's something that I don't see a lot of people talk about, but actually can be a problem, and that's too much suction. I'd never run into this before because I'd always use Makita sanders and they have a tiny dust collection port, but I recently switched to Rigid and it has a larger port. And at the same time, I also purchased a much better quality hose that didn't need a roll of duct tape to make everything fit. But I quickly realized that it would literally suck the sander to the workpiece and stop spinning, and then that would start getting those swirl marks. Thankfully, this newer hose has adjustable points on each end that has a hole and a, and a collar, and turning that collar opens the hole up more, and it gives it less suction on the far end, and thus that kind of fixed my problem. So while it's not widely discussed, too much suction can be a problem. Sanding doesn't have to be a frustrating nightmare. It is a boring part of the job most of the time, but if you will learn to accept what it is and what it will require, you'll find that your results will be much better using proper sanding technique in the beginning will be much faster than having to sand finish back off a piece because of poor results. 
And in my opinion, that alone is worth doing it right the first time. If you'd like to know what the next step after sanding is and a good way to get a simple finish, I've got a video queued up for you right here that'll tell you all about it.